look at the object or the picture on the screen. You must have seen this instrument at your homes when you are suffering from a fever. When you are suffering from a fever, your parents use it to measure the temperature of your body. So this instrument is basically used to measure the temperature and it is known as a thermometer. So thermometer is nothing but a device which is used for the measurement of temperature. So when you are suffering from a fever, your parents will put this in your mouth and they will find out what the temperature of your body is. Now not only in case of fever and human beings, a thermometer can also be used to measure temperature for other bodies. For example, in this case, a different kind of thermometer is being used to measure the temperature of food. Now this is being used to find out whether the food has been cooked properly or not. So as you can see, a thermometer can have a variety of uses. Now how are we able to read the temperature from a thermometer? Let us find out. If you observe a thermometer closely, that is the one that you can see on the screen, you will find that there is a slight bulb at the bottom of the thermometer. If you take the thermometer which you have at your home, you will find that there is a bulb like this at the bottom. This bulb contains a small amount of liquid. Again, if you observe closely, you will find that there is a very thin filament that runs through the center of the body of the thermometer. It is through this filament that this liquid rises when it expands. Why does it expand? Because when we are about to measure the temperature of a hot body, this liquid is coming in contact with the hot body and as a result, it is expanding. So now we have studied that in case of liquids, the expansion takes place only in case of the volume. So over here when the liquid is expanding, it will rise up through this thin filament. So in this case, the expansion in volume is primarily through the increase in height of the liquid column in this filament. As you can see, on the sides of this filament, there are certain numbers that have been marked and certain scales. So with the help of these scales and numbers and by the height which the liquid column rises to, we can find out what is the temperature of the body which we are measuring. So before we start grading and scaling the particular thermometer and measuring the temperature, there are two standard points that have to be considered. These two standard points are known as the ice point of the thermometer and the steam point of the thermometer. Now let us define the ice point and the steam point. The ice point of thermometer is the melting point of pure ice at normal atmospheric pressure that you know is zero degrees Celsius. And the steam point of the thermometer at normal atmospheric pressure is the boiling point of pure water at normal atmospheric pressure which you know is 100 degrees Celsius. Now let us find out how we are grading the ice point and the steam point and all the grades and scales in between the ice point and the steam point. So now we are going to talk about in how many ways a thermometer can be graded. It can be graded in three scales. That is, we call them the thermometric scales. The first is known as the Celsius or the centigrade scale. The second is known as the Fahrenheit scale. And the third is known as the Kelvin scale. So now we are going to talk about how the thermometer can be graded in these scales and how these scales are related to one another. So first we talk about the Celsius scale which was invented and used first by the Swedish astronomer Anders Celsius. So how is a thermometer graded in the Celsius scale? Firstly the thermometer is kept in a mixture of ice and water. Now when it is done so, you will notice that the liquid inside the thermometer becomes fixed at a point. That point is known as the ice point. So the ice point is 0 degrees Celsius. So that point where the liquid becomes fixed is marked as 0 degrees Celsius. Now the thermometer is placed in boiling water. Now you will find that the liquid column rises to a certain height and after expansion 
it becomes fixed at one particular point after rising. So that point is known as the steam point, which is the boiling point of pure water. So in this case, it will be 100 degrees Celsius. So now we have obtained two points, 100 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius. We have studied earlier that the change in volume or the change in length in case of any material is directly dependent on the temperature. That is, it is directly proportional. So in this case, the change in volume of the liquid is taking place primarily through the change in height of the liquid in the thin filament. So what can we say? That this change in height of the liquid is directly proportional to the change in temperature. So we can say that the distance in between 100 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius can be equally graded in 100 equal parts. Or in other words, each part will correspond to a reading of 1 degree Celsius because we are dividing the region in between 100 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius into 100 equal parts. Why? Because the change in height of the liquid column is directly proportional to T, that is the change in temperature. Next we talk about the Fahrenheit scale. The Fahrenheit scale was first used and invented by a German scientist known as Daniel G. Fahrenheit. So now let us find out how the Fahrenheit scale was graded. Now similarly, as we did for the case of Celsius, we place the thermometer in ice and water. That is a mixture of ice and water. And we find that the liquid becomes steady at one point. So in the Celsius scale, that point was 0 degrees Celsius, the ice point. In case of the Fahrenheit scale, it is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The ice point is the 32 degrees Fahrenheit for the Fahrenheit scale. Next, this thermometer is placed in boiling water. Now when it is placed in boiling water, we saw that the temperature is equal to 100 degrees Celsius. That is the point where the liquid column became steady after expansion. The same point on the Fahrenheit scale is equal to 200 and 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you will remember that I told you that the change in height of the liquid column is directly proportional to temperature, which is why we were able to divide the region in between 100 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius into 100 equal parts. So similarly in this case, we divide the region in between 212 degrees Fahrenheit and 32 degrees Fahrenheit in 180 equal parts. Thus we can say that each part or each division corresponds to 1 degrees Fahrenheit and there are 180 degrees in between 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Next we talk about the Kelvin scale which was first used and invented by William Thompson who was also known as Lord Kelvin. Now Lord Kelvin had discovered a very interesting property of matter. We have studied that whenever we heat any substance, the kinetic energy of its particles or molecules increase. Similarly, when we cool a substance, the kinetic energy decreases. Why? Because kinetic energy is directly dependent on the temperature of that particular substance. So now if we are decreasing the temperature of a particular substance and we go on decreasing it, what will happen? The kinetic energy of these particles will go on decreasing. That is their to and fro vibration will continue to decrease. A point will come which is known as zero Kelvin where the kinetic energy will cease completely. Or in other words, the, vibration, the vibratory motion will cease completely. And the kinetic energy of these particles will become zero. So this point that is marked as zero Kelvin is also known as the absolute zero or the Kelvin zero. At this point, the temperature that is zero Kelvin, at this point what happens is the kinetic energy completely becomes zero and the vibratory motion ceases. Now as you can see there are two other markings 
on this particular Kelvin scale. 273 Kelvin and 373 Kelvin. So in a similar manner, the Kelvin scale is also graded. If it is kept in ice, the point where it becomes steady is 273 Kelvin. And when it is kept in boiling water, the point where it becomes steady is 373 Kelvin. Again, in this case, the change in liquid column height is directly proportional to the change in temperature. So as a result, we can divide this into a hundred equal parts. So we can divide the region in between 373 Kelvin and 273 Kelvin into hundred equal parts with each part corresponding to one Kelvin. Now you will notice that the number of parts, the total number of parts in between 273 Kelvin and 373 Kelvin is hundred. In the Celsius scale also, in between 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius, it had 100 equal parts. Thus, we can very simply find out the relation in between Kelvin and Celsius. The relation between Kelvin and Celsius is given by K, that is the reading on the Kelvin scale, equals 273 plus C. So the ice point of water which was 0 degrees Celsius, we can find out the equivalent Kelvin if we simply add 273. Thus we get 273 Kelvin as you can see. Similarly for the boiling point or steam point, we add 273 to 100 degrees Celsius and we get 373 Kelvin. So the relation with which Kelvin and Celsius are related is quite simple. Now let us find out how we can relate the Celsius scale and the Fahrenheit scale. Now for this case, we are considering that these thermometers are kept in two bodies and the length to which their liquid columns is rising is the same. That is the height in both the liquid columns is the same. Now let us find out how we can relate the temperatures. So we are considering that L centimeters is the length or the height of the liquid column. In this case, mercury is the liquid we are considering. So L centimeters is the length or height to which the mercury has risen on expansion. So in case of the Celsius scale, we have seen that there are a hundred equal parts. So if there are a hundred equal parts, the length in the Celsius scale for each degree will be L by 100 because for the total it is 100. So for one particular degree it will be L by 100 when the rise in length is L. Similarly, in case of the Fahrenheit scale, we can say that for each degree the length is L by 180. Why? because the entire length has been divided into 180 equal parts. So we can say that since the change in length is L and since the entire length is divided into 180 equal parts, so what will be the length for each part? The length for each part will be L by 180. As you can see, for Celsius it is L by 100 and for Fahrenheit it is L by 180. Now, we have to find out the reading on the Celsius scale. So initially we had considered the Celsius scale that 0 degrees Celsius. That is the temperature of the substances which we are measuring was 0 degrees Celsius. So in case of Celsius scale, it is rising from 0 degrees Celsius to a temperature let's say C degrees Celsius. So if the length of each degree is L by 100, what will be the length of C degrees? It will be C minus 0 into L by 100. Or in other words, it will be nothing but C into L by 100. Because the length for each degree is L by 100. So according to unitary method, the length for C degrees will be C L by 100. Similarly, in case of Fahrenheit, we have considered the initial or the ice point 
as 32 degrees Fahrenheit, as we found out. So in this case, when we are measuring a particular temperature, it is rising to, after heating, F degrees Fahrenheit. So how can we measure the length? That length of expanded mercury in the Fahrenheit thermometer will be given by F to which the temperature is rising minus 32. Why? Because it is rising from 32 to F. And in case of Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the ice point. So if the length of each degree is 1 by 180, what will be the length of F minus 32 degrees? It will be F minus 32 into L by 180. And that is exactly what I have written over here. Now, initially we have considered that in both the thermometers, the length through which it is rising is the same. So I can equate these two relations with one another. I can write C minus 0 into L by 100 is equal to F minus 32 into L by 180 because the length to which they are rising is the same. Thus, I get this relation. How? If you recall that the relation we had obtained was this. So over here you will find that L is common on both these sides. So I can cancel out L. C minus 0 is nothing but C. So I can write C by 100 is equal to F minus 32 by 180. Now let's see what happens when we cross multiply. When I cross multiply, I get 180 by 100 into C equals F minus 32. So how can I simplify 180 by 100? I can cancel out this 0. And since there is a common factor of 2, I can write 9 by 5. Thus, again, I cross multiply. I bring 9 to this side. When I do so, I come up with this relation. That is C by 5 is equal to F minus 32 by 9. This is how the Celsius and Fahrenheit scales are related to one another. So if we are given a reading on the Celsius scale, we can easily find out the reading on the Fahrenheit scale with the help of this formula. Now we have seen earlier that the Kelvin scale is related to the Celsius or centigrade scale with the help of this simple relation. So if I rearrange this equation, I can write C is equal to 273 minus K. So if I simply replace the value of C in the formula that we just obtained, I will get 273 minus K divided by 5. And this will give me a relation in between Fahrenheit scale and Kelvin scale. So we learnt about the three thermometric scales that are used the Celsius scale, the Fahrenheit scale, and the Kelvin scale. In the Celsius scale, the ice point and steam point are 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius respectively, and the region in between these two points is divided into 100 equal parts. In the Fahrenheit scale, the ice point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and steam point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, and the region in between them is divided into 180 equal parts. For the Kelvin scale, the ice point is 273 Kelvin and the steam point is 373 Kelvin. And the region in between them is also divided into 100 equal parts. We also find out, found out the relations in between Celsius and Fahrenheit, Celsius and Kelvin, as well as Fahrenheit and Kelvin. If you remember, we also defined a particular term which is known as absolute zero or Kelvin zero. That is the temperature on the Kelvin scale at which the vibratory motion of the molecules or the particles in a medium ceases completely. That is, they stop completely and the kinetic energy becomes zero. Why? Because kinetic energy is dependent on velocity and the velocity becomes zero. So that point is known as the absolute zero.